Hi everybody and today I'm talking about what purpose emotional eating serves for many clients and of course it is all about safety and in order to um, dig into this a little bit we're going to be using the fire cards from the four energies of emotional eating card deck and of course our fire cards are all about our mental energy so you can see here the card says that the fire cards are all about mental energy where it's being spent how it is blocking you from the changes you so badly want to make how you can change the inner chatter you've become so used to that you barely hear it as separate to yourself anymore so that's the inner critical voice it's going all the time you know and it's also your inner sentry as i call it you know the person who's always on guard for the danger and you don't even see it as something separate to yourself this is your normal you're so used to it so we really have to tap into that unconscious sort of running of that script and break it so that you give your brain a chance to do something different other than a remain hyper vigilant when the danger is long past and b make a different choice other than eating in response to the trigger which is often just stress it says again the fire cards are about burning all the old negative thoughts and beliefs that do not serve you so you're carrying a lot of old thoughts and beliefs that actually don't serve you anymore they're not relevant to your current day life they're old thoughts old patterns and we do need to break that unconscious pattern um, and allow yourself to upgrade and update the voice in your head so we want to replace them with new positive supportive thoughts and, be and beliefs and we also think that the fire cards represent the phoenix arising from the ashes so what version of you needs to rise up now? So this is about doing a bit of an update or an upgrade. You know, it's almost like, I don't like to say a factory reset in terms of the computer in your brain, but certainly to do um, a big software update and, and really try and allow yourself to let go of some of these unhelpful thoughts and beliefs and triggers that keep you stuck in that pattern of emotional eating, which again is all about safety. And we're going to dig a little bit deeper into that now. Okay. This card is one of the first cards of the fire energy suit and it says your brain is trying to keep you safe. So it shouts danger, danger whenever it thinks you're threatened. So of course, this is why we have the fire alarm sort of light. You know, you see the flashing siren and you're like, ah, there's something, is, something's going wrong. Where's the danger? Where's the danger? And the card says, if you learned how to eat as a way to self-soothe back then, this can become a deeply internalized response to stress or anything else you believe is difficult to handle. So many of our clients experience a trauma in their young life okay so that could have been an or just an adverse childhood experience or some kind of difficult element of their family life so it's very common here in Ireland for example that a parent might have been an alcoholic there might have been a diagnosed or undiagnosed mental illness or a physical illness for instance my mum um, went through a two-year period of very severe depression after a very serious car accident that she had so in our family, that was a, a very challenging time for us. It was quite traumatic for everybody. You know, one minute my mum was there, the next minute she was in hospital for six weeks. Then she was at home for six months but couldn't walk properly. Um, and then she went through two years of depression. And I was eight or nine at the time. I don't really, re I remember certain parts. I remember my dad being around and my mum not being around. Um, but I certainly didn't know the half of what was going on until I was older and, you know, I was able to talk about it with my mum and my dad. And we were able to have a chat about the impact that it had on us, you know, that our mum literally wasn't available to us for a couple of years, that we all had to be quiet, we had to mind mum, we had to, you know, not disturb her, we had to leave her alone. That that kind of puts you on guard. And of course, my dad was on edge. You know, he was obviously, uh, the poor man was dealing with an awful lot. He was looking at three, looking after three kids under the age of nine and also looking after my mum who couldn't walk. So their bed was actually moved down into the living room of our house. They slept in the living room. So like I do remember sitting on the bed and they had a, an old brass bed. I remember looking through the bars of the bed to watch TV. And it was great fun that we were able to like lie on mum's bed watching television. But, you know, there was a very serious undertone to that, which was my mother couldn't walk. So the, the bed was in our living room. So for some people, um, the situation that they lived through as a child was maybe more challenging, more difficult. Maybe their parents weren't as present. Maybe they didn't have the same support, you know, that maybe I had around that time and where do you go or what do you turn to when your whole world is turned upside down that your mum suddenly isn't available to you maybe your dad isn't available to you either because he's busy you know looking after everything else and so digging into that a little bit and, and learning that maybe that was when you first learned to turn to food as your self-regulation or your self-soothing strategy now the problem with this is our brains are very clever but they're also quite stupid 
So the brain will immediately latch on to anything that it perceives works. So this is an autopilot. So, for example, when you learn how to drive, you have to think about all the actions that you have to take to drive the car and then eventually it becomes automatic. You get into the car, you drive 20 minutes, you get to where you're going and you suddenly realize you don't remember one second of the journey because you've been in your head the whole time thinking about something else. That's how automatic it becomes. It's the same with emotional eating in response to a trigger or a threat. Over time, when as a child, when, you know, maybe you were upset about something, you couldn't ask your mom, you couldn't ask your dad, your dad was short tempered, your mom was not available, she was asleep, she was, you know, you could tell she wasn't in good form. And you learned that eating food helped to calm down that cortisol and gave you that little dopamine kick in your brain. So your brain thought to itself, OK, when I get when I get a cortisol rush because I'm stressed, I eat, I get the dopamine. That's great. I've, I've worked it out. That's how I solved this problem. Fast forward, I'm 55 now. Uh, my mother is walking around and playing golf and doing all the things she always does. And, you know, she never experienced depression again after that. It was one period of episodic depression, as they call it, as opposed to, you know, uh, enduring chronic depression. But I, you know, I may still be somebody who's hypervigilant and still be, you know, looking out for the threat. I'm, I, you know, a lot of clients would have become very attuned to the emotional environment around them. So, you know, what kind of humor is mom in? What kind of humor is dad in? Is he going to give out to me? Is he going to shout at me? Should I just go to my room? Will I tell the kids, the other kids to keep quiet? All of this kind of thing. And this is what you have to understand about long standing emotional eating that maybe started in childhood. Your brain has not got the memo that the danger has passed. Your brain has not got the memo that you do not need to be taking the emotional temperature of everybody all the time. Your brain has not got the memo that you are in a completely different situation with people who love and support you, uh, you know, your family around you, your friends around you, you've, um, you know, professionals around you maybe, and you do have that support system around you now, but the, your brain is still stuck in, I get stressed, I eat, it calms me down. So what the fire cards are all about is teaching your brain to let go of the autopilots that it has internalized over time. But in order to do that, you have to make them more conscious. You have to become consciously aware of when you're being triggered like that and then make a conscious decision to do something different other than eating. So I hope that's helpful in terms of thinking about the when does the fire alarm go off in your mind for you. The second card that I'm using to illustrate this is this little guy here. And what this card says is close your eyes for a moment. Look up into your mind's eye and imagine a mini you standing on an outlook post or a sentry post, constantly scanning the environment. So thoughts like, what are they thinking about me? Why did he or she say that? What does my boss really think? What does she, does she or he really like me? And the card says tiring much. And of course, that is very tiring. It is mentally exhausting to be on hyper alert all the time looking for. I mean, I often do this with my clients. Here. Where's the next danger? Where's the next danger? Where's the next danger? Where's the next danger? But I really do think that that's where a lot of our clients are in their minds. They're hyper vigilant, scanning the environment all the time for the next threat and the next danger. Because, again, think back to that child back in the day. Maybe there was alcoholism in the family, violence, chaos, unpredictability, you know, and that child became very attuned to the environment and what the emotional temperature was at any given time. But again, that's not where you live now. That's not your environment now. Now you can afford to let go of that hypervigilance and relax. So that's what this is about. So this is an exercise that you can do that helps with this. And this is about helping to talk your mind down off the ledge, so to speak. Imagining an enormous fluffy white pillow beside you. Invite your inner sentry or your, you know, your inner ninja <laughs> to take a break and relax. And let it all go for a short while. Let them sink into the pillow, close their eyes and relax. You can relax with them. Putting your hands on your heart, because this is a heartwarming exercise, and maybe just closing your eyes and imagining in your mind's eye a little version of you, a little mini you, standing on a sentry post or a sentry box, looking out, you know, doing that hypervigilant, you know, where's the next danger, where's the next danger? And just taking a couple of deep breaths. And then maybe as the adult you are now, stepping into that picture in your mind's eye and putting your hand out and inviting that mini you or little you to step down from the sentry box and lie down on an enormous white fluffy cushion or pillow or whatever you want a big balloon maybe you know bean bag and just invite the child to step down the little you the mini you and take a break and just lie down on the bean bag and maybe you can sit or lie down on the bean bag with them and just breathe into that image for a few moments. 
just giving yourself permission to take a break from the hypervigilance. Now you can do that exercise for as long as you feel you need to, for as long as you feel you need to bring yourself down off the ledge. And what's really important to understand about this, this activity is, this is not something I want you to try and do in the moment when you are stressed and you're thinking about an alternative to eat. We're not there yet. When I want you to actually do this is actually at a moment in time where um, you're beginning to feel a little bit pressurized or, you know, you might just be running a low level of anxiety, but you're not, you're certainly not at the point where you're going to go down to the fridge or ring the takeaway. Even when we did it just now while you're watching this video, that's a very helpful thing to do. So how I often explain this to clients is this idea of being up to 90. So in Ireland, we say, oh, I'm up to 90. I'm so stressed. I'm up to 90. And actually, I've long ago started thinking about that as like a barometer of like, you know, 10 to 100, where 100 is the the bulb of the thermometer or it's almost like that bell in the fairground where you, you bang the hammer and the thing shoots up and rings the bell. If you're up to 90 a lot of the time, it doesn't take much for you to go get to 100. And 100, of course, is when you'll be triggered to binge. So the more you can actually bring your system back down to below 90, bring it down to 30 or 40 or 20 or even 10, the longer it'll take for it to get up to 90 and then, you know, the longer it'll take even more to get it to 100. So doing that kind of relaxation exercise where you just bring yourself down off that ledge, that sentry post, lie down on the cushion, take a break, you're bringing your system back down to 20 or 30 and it's going to take it that much longer to get up to 90 or 100. So doing that exercise maybe once or twice a day can be very helpful and set an alarm on your phone, remind yourself to do it or bring it in as a new habit where you do it in the morning. My intention today is to be relaxed and calm. My intention today is to, to let go of hypervigilance and do that little exercise in the morning and then do it again at night before you go to bed because even though maybe there's nothing much happening in the morning or the night, you know, because it's during the middle of the day that all the action happens, just training yourself to bring your system down from 90 to, you know, 10, 20, 30, whatever it is, is a way of just resetting the system. And of course, what we're trying to do is turn this very sensitive alarm off so that it doesn't go off every single time you think somebody's looking at you crooked or having a, a negative thought about you. Never mind all the other challenges that you might think you're having in your life. So I really hope that makes sense. And those fire cards, they're all about this mental energy and how your brain is not actually helping you. And in fact, it's maintaining your emotional eating by continuing to trigger you into anxiety or fear or whatever the emotions are that then trigger a binge. And the purpose of the binge is to get the dopamine hit, which counteracts the cortisol and brings it back down. But it doesn't solve the underlying problem, which is that your hypervigilance system is running at full strength all the time. And the breathing exercise that I've just walked you through actually is something that does help reduce that hypervigilance and bring you down into a calmer state. So I really hope you find that helpful for this week and I look forward to seeing you again on my next video. But for now, Take care. As usual, thanks for watching my video and please feel free to hit the like button, subscribe and add any comments down below and I will answer them. Um, if you need further help and support, please feel free to reach out. We do have a network of eating feeding practitioners um, around the world now at this stage working online and in person. Um, you can buy our card deck, which is a great uh, way to work through some of the challenges you're having yourself. Um, when you buy the card deck, you will get a copy of the ebook along with that. Um, you can buy the ebook on its own, and that is your low cost alternative. So we try to make everything as accessible as possible, and you can very successfully work through the ebook without a card deck. Um, and that comes in at you know less than seven dollars. And again, look at our directory if you wish to find a practitioner yourself and uh, contact them directly for the support that you need. But for now, take care and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye for now.